Welcome back everyone to Rotary Craft Speed Spotlight. We are now on to part 6. That means we are covering everything from defense machines, to defense machines to offensive machines, to surveying machines, to cosmetic machines. There is a ton I want to cover in this and everything in it is so cool. I got to experiment with all these things and they are just amazing. Time for me to show you them. Here we go. First thing we got is an arrow gun. You take a dispenser, you surround it with some steel, you get an arrow gun, you put some arrows in it, and all you really need is a DC electric engine, and then it'll fire arrows whenever anything steps in front of it, up to that range I've seen with this, but you can power harder and you can get more stuff out. You give a nether star and some glowstone base powder, you get heat ray core, diamonds and glass, you get a lens, then glowstone and obsidian, you get a heat ray barrel, then you take a... Um, Electrum, copper, redstone, all that. If you replace the um, electrum with gold and the copper with an eye you get two of these, but it's a power module. And you take all those things, you put them together, you get a heat ray. I'm going to show you what this is later because it's kind of destructive, but basically it'll set anything in front of it on fire. Now, two, two um, circuit boards and a redstone, you get a TNT launcher, and if you put TNT into it, it will launch it. Not actually destroying what's right here, but destroying what's down there. If you power it with at least one of these things, gasoline engine, then it'll go at a minimum launch angle, at a maximum launch angle of two and a maximum launch, maximum launch distance of 31. You can also get a TNT cannon targeting aid. I have not figured out how to use this, but apparently you can look at a block and the TNT um, cannon will target it. Now, for these sonar units and a turbine, will get you a sonar sonic weapon. And if you power this with a performance engine, it will literally kill anything within this radius. Anything within the second blue radius, it will um, give some harmful effects to you. Now, Diamond Nether Star Lapis will get you a force field. And now, if you power this with a micro turbine, and it'll emit a force field, repelling any range, repelling any arrows or hostile mobs. Steel, a gold coil, will get you one of these wild things. Combine them on a power module, will get you a rail, an accelerator. Two coils and a shaft will get you a um, generator, put that with the sonar unit and some other stuff. will get you a turret aiming aid. Some gears and some steel will get you a turret base. Combine all those things together, you finally get yourself a railgun. This thing takes railgun ammo, which, first, which at first takes three steel. Then you can add two wood, then four wood, then eight wood, then two stone, four eight, two four eight um, gold, two four eight iron, two four eight bedrock. It'll get progressively heavier. The heaviest ones will require a gas turbine geared up 128 times for torque to launch, but they are extremely powerful. I'll show you that later. Now glass and some gears will get you a freeze ray, and this will target and freeze any mouse below it using either snowballs or ice, depending on what you provide it. It is a little buggy. It doesn't always seem like to launch, but when it does, it's pretty helpful, so you might want to get a few of them. Now, same thing used for the force field, but with purple, you get a containing unit, and this does the opposite. It holds any, holds any hostile mobs inside of it. Now you take everything you had before from the heat ray and the railgun, except the accelerator, I guess, and you can get yourself a laser cannon, which is kind of like the um, ice cannon, except it fires lasers at it, and it's also kind of destructive, so I'm going to show you that later. Now, you pick a pressure plate and an ignition unit, and you can get yourself a landmine, which takes in a coil, and it takes up to four gunpowder for a bigger explosion. TNT makes um, it launch TNT every year. Glass makes it do more damage. I don't know what these two do, but apparently they do something. Put in a um, wine spring. Anything that, if anything steps right there, it will go off. Now, two of the circuit boards, a compressor, and a chest will get you a block launch. I haven't figured out how to get this thing to work. Right now, all it'll seem to do is launch and place the block right above it, which isn't very helpful. Self-destruct unit, you take some TNT, a circuit board, and a shaft, and when this gets power cut from it, it will blow up pretty harshly. Gold coils, nether star, and you can get an EMP machine. This seems very end game. It takes four gigawatts of power, which is 67 gas turbines. So it's either a creative thing or extremely, extremely end game, but it'll disable any electronic devices around it. Now you take a sonar unit and a pellet, you get a um, air blaster type thing, and it'll use air and just launch any mobs away from it. Take two bricks and a glass panel and two hubs, and you get a Van de Graaff generator. So this thing will slowly build up a charge, and then when anything gets inside of it, it'll damage it. The higher charge it has, then it'll do more damage. Now you take a sonar unit and a circuit board and a screen, and you can get a ground penetrating radar, and this will show you anything on the ground pretty nifty, and all it takes is a gasoline engine. Now you take a sonar unit and a screen and a circuit board of gears, you'll get a mob radar, which will show you the position of any mobs around you, and you can increase the power you put into it, but all it really takes is a steam engine. Now a sonar unit, um, sonar unit, circuit board, and some steel, you get a cave scanner, 
which when you turn it on will scan for any caves below you. This white box does not move even though it looks like it is. And you can move the white box by right clicking on the sides of the scanner and it'll shift it over that direction. But anything that you see, it, those dots, those are all um, air spaces which show you that where the caves are. Now you take a dispenser, eye bender, it's a redstone, you get a firework launch. It'll combine materials and actually make the fireworks for you and do it kind of randomly. If you put in firework stars, it'll choose those over everything else. But it will shoot off some random fireworks, put it more speed. But it does need a gasoline engine geared up eight times for speed. Now, four music box and a circuit board will get you a music, music box. <laughs> and this, you can start putting in some tunes and it will... It's kind of slow. Let's do this. Power with redstone. It'll start playing whatever you had. Now, um, glowstone and a circuit board will get you a projector. You've seen me use this before as my introduction. But basically, you put in a projection slide, which is crafted with um, glass and paper. And when you, sh when you power it, it'll shift everything down. You can also make a custom projection slide using redstone. And you can draw whatever you want, save it on your computer. And it'll load that up. And you can see I drew a poorly drawn duck. Now you get a daylight sensor and a circuit board. You get a silver iodide cannon, which will change the weather. You saw it rained earlier, and this thing actually was what stopped the rain. It launched sawdust into the sky. It takes a gasoline engine power from the bottom, and it will detect when the rain's not what it wants it to be. This will cause it to rain, this will cause it to thunder, and this will cause it to superstorm. This is just crafted with some salt, which is made from just water. Now you get an en um, a a ender pearl and a circuit board and some steel. You get a projection screen, and this will tell you, like I have it, right click with the book to change the message, and your right click doesn't consume the book, but it will change the message on it. I don't have a book to change it to though. Now circuit board dispenser impeller, and you can get a um, particle display, give it a wine spring, and it will display any particle you want above it. Pretty nifty. Okay, so, wow, that's glitching. That does happen, just so you know. Um, this spotlight was 62851. That's not what I wanted, but pretty good considering I just covered four pages of the book, three sections. There's a lot in this mod I've said from the beginning. <laughs> this is just proof of that. Um, now I'm going to do some, uh, just show you some quick demonstrations of some of the things that I didn't get to. Um, every, every, I already showed everything. I'm just going to show some of the stuff that I couldn't show in this world because it was a little too dangerous. You saw the TNT cannon. I will show you that sonar unit way over there should still be running. If I were not in creative past this line I am now slowness mining launch all that bad stuff and slowly taking damage and one second I keep my inventory because when I cross this line I die it is that powerful but there is a, an internal a GUI I guess yeah I just set it to 159 I don't think it's supposed to be that powerful at that low of cost, but it is. Uh, force field. Let's fire an arrow at it. See? I cannot get arrows. Well, they're going in, but they're just getting knocked down. Same thing for hostile mobs, and any arrows from the inside will get repelled outward. So you never really got a chance to see this work too much. See, it aims kind of slowly, but it will launch stuff at it eventually. <laughs> Sometimes it takes a little bit longer, but it will freeze it where it is. Like it'll give it slowness and jump boost that will stop it from moving. Containment unit. Let's get a zombie uh, creeper in here. That's a zombie. Oh, I just broke it. But yeah, you can see it wasn't going out. Oh, something blew up over here. This was the Van der Graaff generator. Yes, they do explode. If you don't, if you don't control the charge, they will um, just explode. I forgot about that. Okay, so this thing, as soon as the power stops, this thing takes a little while to slow down. But as soon as the power is cut to it, it will explode fairly violently, considering it only takes three TNT. So, yeah, you can tell why I didn't want to do that earlier. Now, there's a few more things I gotta show you. Okay, a few quick demonstrations: heat ray with a micro turbine. 
only goes up to right here, but will set any flammable blocks on fire, including any entities. Give it a gas turbine, and the range is basically infinite. I'll just say that. Here is the railgun. After testing, I found that only the heaviest two weights will damage the environment. This is what the second heaviest does, and this is from a few blasts of the third heaviest. So I will put down a creeper. Let's see, it aims towards it and fires. And fires. That was one shot. The, yeah, the other ones just do damage. So now, let's look at the laser gun. Stop the creeper right here. Move its laser over. Start it e setting, turning everything it looks at into lava. Just remember that. <laughs> and now for the uh, landmines. Okay, so here's the first one. This gives you a little damage, nausea, blindness, the usual bad effects. And here is one that has four TNT. Um, uh, four gunpowder, a TNT, and a glass in it, and it's a little bit—it's a little bit more dangerous. Let's take a look at that hole. Decent sized, pretty deep, and that's the—that's the landmine. I guess I've said from the beginning, this is a dangerous mod. You have to be really careful with what you're doing, and if you mess up, you mess up big. Anyway, hope that helped, and thanks for watching. There should be one more episode left. Bye-bye.